Okay, guys. Yo, I finished Stargirl Season 2. I know I'm a little bit late, but as you saw, I had also quite some other videos to do. And my gosh, this season was so good. It was a little bit better than the first season and structured around summer school. And what I liked so much is that that it had quite some goofy moments, but generally saying Eclipso was a badass villain. And at the last episode, where the big fight was and everything, it said Keith David in the credits, you know, starring Keith David. So it's like waiting the whole episode for Keith David, and he showed up in a in a post credit scene, kind of as Mr. Bones. And I was like, yo, I, I couldn't believe it. I was freaking out. You know, Mr. Bones is the uh, head administer of Helix. So he's a great villain of Infinity Inc., which was the second incarnation of the Justice Society of America. I'm gonna be so excited for the next season which is going to be called Frenemies, but that's solid. But sadly, season three of Stargirl will be coming in 2022, and I don't want to wait that long. Overall, I can say I like the characters and their arcs, but it was weird, you know, for some characters to just disappear. Maybe the actors were busy with other projects or whatever. And we also didn't get the heroes so much in costume, which is sad too. Overall, uh, Stargirl was probably my my most favorite superhero media of the year, better than any anything from Marvel or any on anything like that. You heard me in the last videos how excited I was and. Unlike that, maybe it's maybe it's because uh, Stargirl is a show and not a film, and that's why I was more invested in it because it can give uh, more depth to its characters. Anyway, there was great action. The scenes were great. The villain was really intimidating for the most part. Eclipse was the right choice. And a huge step up uh, in the villains department toward, uh, unlike last season, which had too many villains and not that many made a really an impact or leave an impact behind, besides Chef. Also, uh, the Shade was great. You know, the Shade is a great character. I always love him. Maybe I plan to do a video on it. And I mean, I talked a little bit about Shade in my video about all Starmans in history. But that was a great addition to the cast. Also, Jade, Green Lantern's daughter. It was nice seeing her. And also the original Flash, Jay Garrick, played, of course, by... Uh, Fuck, I forgot his name. But uh, the, fl the original Flash that was introduced in the Flash TV show, Jay Garrick, showed up in Stargirl, meaning that Stargirl takes place in the same timeline as the Arrowverse post-crisis. And yeah, really enjoyed the season and its storyline and its characters. It's going to be interesting to see what they going to do with, for example, uh, our man, because he doesn't have his hourglass anymore. It gives him super strength and how he uh, is going, going to struggle as a superhero. Uh, it was nice seeing Landa getting over her arc of killing somebody because it really felt weird without her in episodes she wasn't 
like in the early episodes till episode four, but then disappeared for the whole season until the final two episodes, which felt weird. But hey, that's just just how it is, and it showed in a good way how threatening Eclipso is because he could break up the whole team, and it was just so so much fun because he was messing the whole time with the with the team because he was so overpowered, you know, and so above the league, and how they had to adapt to that challenge. There were other nice things to see, like the original Captain uh, Midnight being not dead, but stuck somewhere else. Shade, like I said before, the introduction of Jade worked really well, and I'm probably guessing here that we're getting her brother Obsidian next season. Obsidian was already seen in season two of Legends of Tomorrow, I believe. But this is going to be his post-crisis version, a younger version, because back then it, back then in Legends of Tomorrow, it followed very close the original timeline of the Justice Society, with it being taken place in the 1940s so with obsidian also in the 1940s 1950s and being an old man and now we're gonna see a younger version that's more faithful to or even more faithful they didn't do much wrong with obsidian i believe back then but yeah it's gonna be interesting and also keith david as mr bones and the struggle against Helix got small hints about Helix in season two of Stargirl because Helix is connected to Jennifer Lynn Hayton, alias Jade. So then was overall nice. And yeah, I really felt this season was good. It didn't bore me. I didn't want to. Uh, make me skip scenes and it's also gonna be interesting for uh, Beth Chapel you know it was so sad during this season because her parents are were really neg 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 neglectful and also going for a divorce and ignoring her and her trying to do everything to please her parents and it's just going unnoticed but at the end of the season they find out she's the new Captain Midnight and they take it really well or oh, not Captain Dr. Midnight sorry um, they find out that she's the new Dr. Midnight and they take it really well and want to help her with her superior identity and tech and yeah this will bring a totally different challenge for the next season and for her character it's going to be interesting where all the Justice Society members are going because we got some new, like I said, Jade, Joaquin Fonda, and most likely Schiff, who went through a good villain arc. Mac DeLacy just excels at this femme fatale role. But I gotta say, it's a bit weird uh, seeing her in a show and acting alongside teenagers because she's like 28. And especially in this season, I felt like her 30s are showing. I mean, the actors of Yolanda Montes, the second white cat, is also around 30 or soon 30. But it's less noticeable. And then, well, overall, yeah, I'm just going rambling and rambling. And that's because I really like this show. And I'm interested, interested to see where Stargirl goes next season with its storylines and characters and you know, challenges. And it, uh, for the most part, what I like about Stargirl is how fresh it feels, how close to the youth. 
without being too obnoxious or anything like that the dialogue is really good and how it acknowledges the past you know i'm a huge fan of that yeah so not to stretch this video any further i'm gonna make a cut here now and we'll see us next time bye have a great time